Hello everybody, Imad Hanna here from Cyber Stockroom. In the last video we spoke about using a map to manage inventory and why that's such a powerful way to track your items. Uh, we also spoke about how intuitive and simple it can be to use a map instead of the more traditional inventory tools that are out there. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend you start there. Uh, we'll include a link in the description below. Uh, in this video, I want to focus on how you can build your own inventory map and how you can maintain it as you continue to use the software and to conduct your business. So let's take this big map off the screen and uh, start from scratch with a blank canvas. Now, the really great thing about the map is that there are no rules as to how you should build it. Each business is going to look different and some locations, which may not be important to someone else, might be very important to you. So the first step is to take a few moments just to think about your business. What does it look like? And which locations in your business are you most keen to keep organized and well-stocked? So for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna create a fictional business and we'll see how we can easily create a map. Uh, the name of this fictional business is going to be Rock and Roll Inc. Now these guys have a bunch of concert equipment like uh, speakers, microphones, cables, and they lease this equipment to different concerts and venues and they set it up for them. So it's a small business, but it has a few different moving parts. For example, the equipment might be in storage at the company's headquarters, or it might be at one of the venues, or it could even be in transit. So let's flesh out a map for this business. What does it look like? First, uh, these guys, maybe they have a storefront where they conduct their business and they keep some of the equipment on hand in that storefront. So we'll click the big yellow plus button to add a new location to this map and we'll choose a type of location. In this case, it's a store and we'll simply call it store. And there it is on the map. Now, let me just say a quick word about the different location types. So you saw when I, when I click the plus icon, I had an option of nine types of locations. So there's warehouses, stores, rooms, floors, bins, shelves, etc. These different types of locations make it a lot easier to organize your map. So you can quickly tell that the difference between a building and a room or a shelf and a bin, etc. However, these locations all work in exactly the same way. If instead of picking a store, we had picked a warehouse, for example, it would still have worked in exactly the same way. Absolutely nothing changes except that it makes it easier for you as a user to quickly identify what's what. Okay, so back to the map. We have a brand new location, the store. That's great. But you know what? Even though the store is pretty small, the equipment is divided into pretty much three different locations inside that store. Uh, maybe there's a front counter. Uh, there's a bunch of ex expensive high-tech equipment on display at the front counter. There's also a back wall stacked with amplifiers and speakers. And there's a huge closet filled with cables and microphones. Now, it might not be necessary to actually map out those three locations. Uh, if the business is small enough and the volume is low enough, in the sense that things don't move in and out of the store too often, then a single location for the store could be enough. But if the business gets moving and, you know, gigs are being booked left and right, then you probably want to be more specific than that. This business that we created is one of the good ones and they, they need to be really organized. So let's add those three locations to the store. This time we don't click the plus icon in the bottom because we're adding a new location. We want to add that location inside the store. So we hover over the store and we'll see the little tab below it where we can attach a sub location. So the first one is the counter at the front of the store. Here we could select a bin or shelf. I'll just select a bin and we'll call it front counter. Great. Now we can see on the map that the front counter is inside the store. Now if we hover over the locations, you'll see a tab under the store location, but you'll also see another tab under the counter location. And this means that we can break down the counter even further if we wanted to. In fact, with Cyber Stock Room, you can create any number of locations and sublocations. This means that you can have extremely detailed maps. We've just gone down one level to create the counter, but if we wanted to, we could go down 10 levels. There's really nothing stopping us. Okay, let's add the wall with all the speakers on it. I'll select the tab under the store location. 
remember, not the counter location, and uh, select, let's say, a shelf to represent that wall. And we'll call it back wall. Okay, great. Now we can see that the store has two sublocations. Let's add a third one. We said there was a closet. So I'll select closet. And since there's only one of them in the store, I'll just call it closet. Great. So now we have a store with three locations inside of it. Before we add more locations, let's check in a few products into these locations. If I hover over the counter, I'll see a green check in icon on top of it. Check in means that I want to move something into that location. So I'll click that and it will take me to the screen where I can select the products to check in. Now for this video, we created a few sample items, but of course in a real business, there would be a lot more items and you could, uh, you know, use a barcode scanner here to find the items, but we'll just go ahead and select the items manually. So this is for the counter with the fancy equipment. So I'll just check in 15 of these uh, microphones, let's say. When I finish, it will prompt for a comment, which I always recommend you do, just so you can retrace your steps later on. So we'll say, uh, adding some fancy microphones to the counter. This is going to take me to the activity page, so I can verify that everything was done properly. Okay, let's, let's go back to the map. Aha, now we've got something. So the color coding here is meant to very quickly tell you what's going on. When we see green, we know that there's something inside that location, which is true because we, we have 15 microphones uh, in the counter now. When we see white, we know that that location is empty. That's also true if you look at the wall and the closet. The gray means that there's nothing inside that location, but there is something inside one of the sub-locations. Now, this could be a little confusing at first. Uh, you might say, well, if there's something in the counter, then technically there's something in the store because the counter is inside the store. And that's true. And that's exactly what that gray means. It means that technically this location has contents, but to be specific, those contents are inside a sub-location. Now, this is an important distinction because it's actually possible to put something directly in the store, in the top location, and make it green. In this case, that's probably not a good idea. Everything should fit nicely into the sublocations. But if, for example, you wanted to have uh, miscellaneous items inside the store that haven't been organized or stored away, you might want to put them directly in the top location. We built Cyber Stock Room to be as flexible as possible, and we don't limit you from doing that. But in most cases, you want to put your items inside the sublocations once you've created them. So let's get back to this business. The store looks good, but there's more to this business than just a storefront. Maybe they have trucks where they keep a bunch of equipment that can be quickly dispatched to the venues. Now we want to create locations outside the store so we can click the plus icon in the bottom. We'll select a vehicle and let's call this one Jane's truck. There it is. Of course, it's white because it's empty. Let's add another one and we'll call it Bob's truck. Now that we have more than one primary location, we have three of them here, the store and the two trucks, we want to start thinking of the map a little bit more geographically. For example, I can line up these trucks on this side and adjust the store like this and save my layout. Now, because we only have those three locations right now, that didn't make a huge difference. But if you have hundreds of these locations, organizing your map is absolutely critical. And on top of that, each user on the same account might want to organize their map differently from everybody else. For example, if you're Jane, then it probably makes sense to put your truck front and center on the map, and everything else can take a back seat. But if you work in the store, you want that up front. The other thing is that as this map gets bigger, it becomes important to be able to navigate it properly. To demonstrate this, let me drag one of those trucks off the screen to the right. If the map is bigger than the screen, you can easily zoom out and zoom in using the plus and minus on your keyboard. 
This is really useful when you're trying to uh, reorganize a number of locations on a big map. Okay, let me go back. Now in the last video, I told you that the map makes inventory transactions intuitive. Let me show you exactly what I mean. If you remember, we put 15 microphones in the counter inside the store and that turned it green. Let's say that we want to take five of those microphones and put them on Bob's truck. Because the map is a visual dashboard, we can simply drag and drop from the counter to the truck. Let's take five out of the 15 and put them on the truck. Now look at the map. It's easy to see where the microphones are and how much we have. It's obvious that they're still in the counter, but also on Bob's truck. This is a level of inventory visibility that you can't get with any other software. There's a lot more you can do with this map, and I hope you will create a trial account at cyberstockroom.com and start building your own map. And as you build it, you'll start adding the pieces that are most relevant to you, and it'll start to take the shape of your business. And remember, the map is not just a pretty picture. It's a very powerful dashboard for all kinds of inventory operations. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please send us an email or visit our website to set up a personal demo. And we'll be happy to walk you through everything and to see if Cyber Stockroom is a good fit for you and your business. Thanks for watching.